Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, I want to talk about quantum computing technologies. We talk about quantum states and uh, quantum uh, bits or qubits. In this lecture, I want to discuss uh, how to implement and realize with the, with the hardware the quantum bits using quantum states. In the previous lecture, we saw that the qubit is the quantum equivalent of the classical uh, bit that can take the state zero or one. We saw that in the case of the quantum bit before the measurement, the qubit allows to the system to be in a superposition of the state zero and one. And we characterize this using a column uh, vector with the complex uh, values. So how we realize the quantum bit in uh, practice? Well, there are two main approaches and uh, two big families of uh, quantum bits. The first one are the so-called natural qubits. So these are uh, a system that are innately quantum mechanical bodies that can be used for a quantum uh, computation. So for instance, we can use uh, ions that are basically atoms where we kick out an electrons and these we can use uh, this uh, system for implementing natural qubits. And a second big family of uh, quantum computing technologies are those that are using so-called synthetic uh, qubits. Synthetic qubits has to be uh, engineered or manufactured into, uh, for instance, artificial uh, system that possess quantum mechanical uh, properties. The two main uh, Characterization uh, points regarding a quantum computing system are the qubit uh, coherence uh, time. You probably heard before when talking about quantum computing system about coherence or decoherence time. So what is decoherence time? Coherence time is uh, how long a qubit can retain its quantum state before the state is ruined by noise. So the noise is so, so big that it damages the uh, qubit uh, states. So this is comparable to, to noise in the classical sense. So this is a, a big factor when looking at uh, different qubit uh, technologies. And the other main factor is uh, the connectivity between uh, qubits, right? So how to connect to qubits, if it is easier or not given a certain technologies. In these lectures, I will brief you, give you an overview of all the technologies. I don't cover all the technologies, but I provide some more detail on uh, technologies in uh, Canvas and uh, uh, to, you know, for their readings. So let's start with the first family of natural qubits. The first one I want to discuss are the so-called trapped ions uh, technologies. So how this does it work? So well, we have uh, an atoms with uh, a nuclei and then we have uh, electrons. We can act uh, with the with the laser on the atoms, right, and uh, kick kick out these electrons uh, from uh, uh, from from the atoms, and that this atom will uh, will get a charge, of a positive charge, uh, because we kick out these electrons using the, the lasers. Once uh, our our atoms is, uh, is 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 charged because we we kick out these electrons, we call this uh, ion. And once uh, this, uh, when it is ions, we have a charge and we can use the electric field to, to basically confine and trap the, uh, the, the ions in, a, in a, a, a special location by using electric, electric fields. So electrical charge atoms, or so-called ions, are held in place with the electric fields. So these are trapped by using uh, um, electric fields. Uh, how we encode? the qubits state uh, so in a trapped ions machine while well, the qubits are stored in uh, electronic state so depending on the electronic state you are either in state zero or one ions are pushed with the laser beams to allow two qubits to interact so we will see in the continuation of this course that we will need to implement the gates to operate on qubits so to make operation on the qubits and we will need also to qubit to interact for, the, for this interaction, we are going to use uh, laser beams. Let's look at a little bit uh, at, the, at the numbers. Uh, qubit coherence time in the case of trapped ions is very high, so one approximately and more than 1,000 uh, seconds. So this is quite uh, quite a long time 
uh, before the, the, the noise uh, damage and disrupt the state of uh, our quantum uh, bit. Also, the connectivity is, uh, is, is, is quite good and high, so how to connect the different qubits. There are some major companies that are investing a lot of R&D in uh, untrapped ions. Probably the, the, the most famous one is uh, the American uh, Ion Cube, uh, but probably also heard about AQT, Honeywell, and uh, the UK-based Oxford uh, Ionics. So we saw already some of the advantage of these technologies. Uh, so the coherence time is very large, right? So it's very stable. And also the, the way to, to, to implement uh, gates and uh, implement operation on the qubit is, uh, is, is very high, it's very good. So what are the disadvantages? Well, is um, the operation uh, to, to act on uh, uh, trapped uh, ions, uh, qubits, are, are slow. And also you can see here that we will need uh, quite a few uh, laser for uh, ionizing the atom, but also for uh, allowing the different qubit to interact. So these are a kind of uh, inter interesting experimental facility if you look online, uh, how a trapped ions machine looks like. A second very promising uh, uh, technology that uh, implements a natural uh, qubit is called uh, neutral ions, or also you hear about cold ions uh, technologies. So in this case, we use uh, uh, neutral atoms uh, in the same way that we saw in the previous slides uh, uh, with, the, with the ions. So neutral ions store the qubits using the electron states. So this is very same like the, uh, the trapped, trapped ions technologies. Like in the previous central, also laser activates the electrons to create an uh, interaction between the qubits. In the case of the cold ions technologies, the coherence time is rather okay, but way less than the trapped ions technologies, around one second you know, today. Qubits also is very connected, uh, but there is a low individual control. You might heard some, uh, some companies uh, implementing uh, cold ions technologies, uh, quantum computer, atom computing, cold quantum is a uh, Quite, uh, quite important one based in the uh, US. And then also Pascal, that is our European quantum uh, computing uh, company. Finally also QERA. What are the advantages? Well, we can have many qubits. We can implement quite, quite a few qubits in different topologies, 2D and 3D. What are the disadvantages? Well, uh, it turns out that, that the called uh, IONS technologies uh, are hard to program and to uh, control the individual uh, qubits and also they tend to be prone to, to noise. Finally, uh, for when it comes to natural uh, photonics, natural uh, qubits implementation, uh, one of the, the most successful and promising technologies, uh, uh, photonics, that is kind of classical technology, so use the photons uh, to, to realize quantum, quantum bits. So how this works? Well, we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, photonic qubits, like so. These are particles of uh, lights that can be generated with uh, with, a, with a laser here at the entrance of our uh, quantum photonic uh, chip, and then they are sent through a maze of optical channels on a chip to interact. So you can see some uh, uh, some basic case like a squeezer inter parameter displacement uh, gates. You see here the, the maze on this, uh, this circuit. And this particular uh, picture comes from uh, the Xanadu. Uh, Xanadu, that is uh, a manufacturer of um, photonic chip, a quantum photonic chip, and also programming uh, en environment. So at the, at the end of this maze, then the, the distribution of, uh, of the photons is, is actually uh, measured. So then uh, here we allow to the, our photons to be in a superposition and then we measure at the end of uh, our photonic uh, chip. Already talked uh, about Xanadu that uh, made this uh, nice diagram of a photonic quantum chip. Also a quite, um, quite popular and quite strong company working on uh, development of uh, a quantum uh, uh, photonic chip is uh, Psy, quantum or Psy. What are the advantages of uh, using photonics for quantum computing 
uh, system? Well, uh, we have uh, a technology that we already know, uh, that is uh, photonics, so we have uh, linear optical gates. We already have integrate photonic on the, on, on the chip. So this is a, a technology that uh, we are quite, uh, quite advanced, especially in photonic chip, uh, but also when it comes to photonic uh, network. So this is a technology that we know already, and, uh, and it looks very, very promising. What are the disadvantages? Well, uh, the disadvantage is that each program requires its own chip with a unique optical uh, channel. Right? So that's uh, quite, uh, make quite cumbersome the development of the, the chip. Another major uh, difficulty is that is, uh, there is no actual uh, memory to, to store the data. So it's, it's basically continuous of photonic being in the superposition state and then uh, measure. Let's look at uh, the second big family of uh, quantum bits. Uh, the first one is the superconducting loops. Uh, by far, this is the most popular. And then I will say a few words also about uh, the silicon quantum uh, dots. So by far, the most uh, popular technologies when it comes to current implementation of quantum bits is the so-called uh, superconductor, uh, quant superconducting quantum bits or superconducting loops. Also, you hear about the uh, transmon uh, qubits. How this, does this is work? Well, what uh, basically we, we implement is, uh, is a quantum uh, oscillator to reach the quantum uh, effects and uh, implement uh, a quantum oscillator that can be harnessed uh, for developing a quantum computer. We need to use a, a superconducting material. Superconducting material is a material that is uh, uh, resistance uh, free, so with no resistance, uh, that is can be achieved only at a temperature lower, a so-called critical temperature. So we need to cool down the, the system, our, uh, our system that is basically an LC, uh, LC uh, circuit to, to very, very low temperature, so it becomes a superconductor. And then we use uh, this uh, uh, quantum oscillator uh, for uh, expressing the quantum states. We can uh, inject a, a microwave uh, signal into our L LC, LC uh, quantum circuit uh, to, to bring the, the quantum system into the superposition of state. The coherence time you see here is, uh, is a fraction of uh, milliseconds, right? So, and so that's uh, one of the, the major challenges nowadays for uh, the the, the system is uh, for a, a superconducting loops quantum system is the, the low qubit coherence time. So all the calculation need to be done before this time because then the, the noise will disrupt all the uh, quantum states. We can uh, implement quantum system with uh, quite high qubit inter in, uh, interconnect. Uh, the major companies are really the, the big players uh, in, uh, in quantum computing today. And you see here Google, IBM with IBM Q, QCI, also uh, Rigetti. All these companies use uh, superconducting loops uh, technologies. It turns out also these are the most visible and, um, and the most popular uh, quantum computing uh, provider. So they all use these superconducting loops uh, technologies. The advantages of these technologies is that we can lay out physical circuit on the, on the chip. Uh, the disadvantage is that, that we need to cool down the, the system to, to very low temperature near to absolute uh, zero, so to zero uh, Kelvin. There is also high variability when it comes to fabrication and the, the current time is, is very low, so there is a lot of noise. Uh, finally, uh, the last technology that we're looking at is the silicon quantum dots. In this case, uh, these artificial atoms are made by adding an electron to a small piece of uh, pure silicon. So this is a silicon, and then we add an, an electron. And then we can use microwaves to control the electron quantum quantum state. Qubit uh, coherence time is quite, uh, quite, quite sh uh, short. Right. The, it's difficult to, to make uh, interconnected uh, qubits, so the connectivity is uh, very low. And there are some, some companies that are pushing for these technologies. Uh, probably the most famous one is uh, Intel, that is also working on a classical, classical chip. 
Also, you might heard about uh, HRL and SQC. The advantages of these technologies is that it borrows from uh, existing semiconductor industry. So this is part of silicon. The disadvantage is that uh, really the interconnection between the qubits, so only a few qubits can, can be today connected. The other, the other issue that it must be cooled to near absolute zero, so we need a big, big fridge. And also there is a high variability when it comes to uh, fabricating a silicon uh, quantum dots. In these slides, I want just to uh, summarize uh, what is the level of uh, maturity for different technologies and also what is the level of uh, investment slash R&D activity in uh, these technologies. So by far, the most advanced technologies when it comes to maturity is the, the superconducting uh, qubits or uh, these transmont uh, qubits. So you see that maturity is measured in terms of uh, TRL uh, that is uh, technological readiness levels that tell us how uh, how close it is to to make a product how to close it is to uh, to to be validated in uh, in application and in the in, the, in in the labs so by far superconducting qubits are the highest TRL3 and 4 and also today are the technologies where the the companies are investing most of the R&D so superconductors, uh, remember from the previous slide, is IBM, uh, Google, and uh, Rigetti. Then all the other technologies are you know, in the medium uh, level of uh, maturity, so photons, uh, cold atoms, and uh, trapped ions. We also have uh, a, a medium level of uh, R&D activity and uh, in investment. All the, these different technologies have uh, a very, very detailed roadmap. So you can go online and check for each company what, are, what is the roadmap for the, for the future. So today we are around here and uh, in, uh, in a few years, you see that different uh, technologies are aiming at um, increasing the number of, uh, of the qubits. So for instance, uh, here we have a, a different uh, system from uh, IBM. Uh, for instance, in um, the Condor, Condor system is, uh, is planned to, to be established with uh, thousands of uh, qubits. So this is quite a uh, quite large uh, system. So these are superconducting uh, qubits. Also, also Google has a very ambitious roadmap. You can see here by 2029, they're really looking at the system with one million qubits. A one million qubit system would allow to implement uh, error correction code, right? So that will be a major, major milestone. Also, you see different roadmaps from, for instance, Cold Atom, uh, where uh, Pascal and Cold Quantum and QERA are a big, big player. So in the middle range in two, by 2025. Finally, Photons also is uh, is looking at uh, reach very large number of uh, qubits that then will allow us to correct in code. And uh, Psi Quantum is looking at uh, implementing at uh, one million qubit computer that is uh, photon uh, based in the, in the time range 2027 and uh, 2030. So overall, it looks very promising. There is a lot of R&D and a very well-defined uh, roadmaps. This is the last slide of this lecture and talk to you soon.